Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. And on your screen is my sketchbook and I have laid out a very simple diagram for my next print. And it consists of a main oval shape here and smaller ovals around it. So that is a rough guide. So this time I'm going to start with the darkest color, which is black. This is uh, Mars Black by Blickrylic. And I'm going to coat the plate with the Mars Black as the first coat and then progressively work to lighter and lighter colors. So let me get started. Now, since this is a student grade paint, this has a lot of extenders. It cuts down on the cost of production as what makes paint expensive is the pigment. This has a lot of extenders in it, but the advantage of having extenders is that it can pick up ghost prints very well. And it has somewhat of a longer open time. It stays wet longer. So I'm going to coat this evenly. It's a little squeaky. I hope it's not that annoying. Okay, so that is the first coat, and I'm going to apply some textures with some bubble wrap, which I had put aside. Now I saved these. These are the larger bubbles, and I think they create very interesting textures. have the small this has a smaller texture Let me just get this out of the way. And my usual scribble marks. These are a little more controlled. So I will leave this on the plate for about 10 minutes and come back and see what we got. Okay, it's been about, 
I'd say 10 to 15 minutes. Let's see what we have here. I think the uh, transfer is pretty successful. These almost look like little fish or shells. It's interesting how certain shapes make your brain start associating them with recognizable ob objects. Pretty cool for a first pull. Like all the little textures were picked up. So this gets air dried and I will proceed to the next step. Now I'm going to see if I can retrieve this ghost print and I'm going to use my favorite raw sienna. I guess the brayers are asking me to oil them. They're kind of squeaky. Okay. It's time for my usual scribble. Just making sure I place the paper on the right place. I have an arrow here that tells me that's the center of the plate. Because I'm a little fussy about centering the image on the paper. It, it takes a little getting used to this uh, Fabriano paper. It's really rough. But I think the image produced is very good because uh, it absorbs a lot of the moisture of the paint since it's a heavier paper. I'm going to look up the uh, pound if it's a 140 pound paper, or maybe it's even higher.
Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. And let's see if it picked up the ghost print. I think it did. Yep, big time. Every little, every little tiny bit of paint has transferred. And that's why the plate is so clean. I'm liking this uh, Fabriano very much as it behaves very well. Very cool. So this gets air dried once more, just like the other one. And I will proceed on to the next step. Okay, I'm back from a short break and I was able to go through my box of old stencils and these are, these are not reusable. Technically, uh, they're made of cardstock and I just cut them out. I've saved these because they, uh, well, since they're cardstock, they're pretty sturdy, but they only have a uh, limited lifespan. I can't wash them. Uh, I can dry them out and then use them again, but there's a limit. But I hope these will work for another whirl. I'm going to use a Blick Studio Bronze as a contrast to the black background. And since it's metallic, I hope it will brighten up the surface. So I'm going to use a smaller brayer. I just hope these pieces behave and not jump out. Since they're made of cardstock, they don't stick as much. But I thought I'd give it a try. Now, I, I'm not quite sure how transparent this is. So, um, there's only one way to find out. Okay. They seem to be easier to remove because they, they don't stick as much. I'm just going to clean this up. So I don't have unnecessary ragged edges. Not that there's anything wrong with a ragged edge, but if I can avoid it and keep it neat looking,
Okay. So here is the first print with the black. Registration holds up because I do want them to line up. And that's why I have these wooden pieces on the left side just to make sure my paper doesn't go beyond where it's supposed to go. Again, I will leave this on for about 10 minutes. Okay, let's see what we got here. It's been about 15 minutes. cool the uh, registration is a little off but what is more important to me is that this is equal to that so the print is still in the middle, more or less. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it needs a third layer, I think. So uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. I will air dry this with my desk fan. Okay, everybody, I'm back from a short break, and I thought I'd give these guys uh, another whirl before they fall apart. Um, I have here cadmium red. This is probably the, the uh, last few drops. Probably the next step will be to cut this tube open so I can get what's left. And this is copper for the bottom. And for the top, I'm going to use this uh, unbleached titanium. For maximum, maximum contrast. So I will start with the unbleached titanium. here.
See, this, this is the reason why using cardstock is not my favorite. I mean, it's if it's there, I will use it, but it has its limitations. It has a limited lifespan and it doesn't behave as well as uh, either acetate or the plastic stencils. But I thought I would show you anyway uh, because as artists we have to improvise oftentimes we have to use what is available. Okay. I think these have reached their end usefulness. This is what I mean. They have a lifespan and I can't use them anymore. So, let's see. I think I have all the stencils out. So here, to refresh your memory, here is the print with the bronze. That's layer number two. And let me just clean this off. I forgot about this. This would have made a nasty smear. Another thing about this Fabriano, when it dries, it retains its uh, rigidity. It's, it's very smooth. It doesn't buckle as much because it's, it's sturdy. And I think that's the benefit of having a heavier weight paper. I'm going to check if how much more it costs compared to Stonehenge or Somerset. Be back in a few minutes. Let's see what we have here.
think that wakes up the print quite a bit. Now, let me see if I can salvage this. Here is the first ghost print. And let me see if I can pick up the remaining color here. Again, I will leave this on for a good 10 to 15 minutes and see what the result will be. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see what we have here. Seems to be just a trace. This is a bad case of misregistration. I think the uh, plate must have shifted, but that can be remedied. So I think I will do another layer on top of this. I have to rethink this. I What I had done is place a silicone mat underneath and I think it shifts too much. I thought it would improve the, you know, make it easier for me to adjust the plate but it's it's moving too much and it's causing a lot of problems so I have to scrap that idea and save this silicone mat for something else it's really designed to be a uh, a protect protector of a surface that you're working on. So and what I use to what I use to register my plate is this guide here. I put it on and then fit I fit the plate in the hole so I know that it's centered. Now I should have done this from the beginning but I was trying to find a new way of You live and learn, and it's nothing that can't be corrected.
Now this material is a heavy grade plastic. This is actually food grade plastic and it does hold up very well. It's washable and I've used this for well, maybe close to six months now. Okay, I'm going to use my Mars Black. This is going on fairly heavy because this is a final coat or a final layer. So here is the ghost print. Now since the uh, layer of black is very heavy, I'm not going to leave it on too long. Okay, keeping my fingers crossed. Okay, I think it's registered much better than last time because I reset the uh, plate. There we go. So I will air dry this and see what the next step is going to be.
I think this will make a very nice ghost print. It's like one round deserves another. This time I will mix that with, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this open and use what's left. This way I can make use of every little bit of the paint without watering it down. Okay, let's see what we have here. I think this is a very nice transfer. A lot of uh, textures. Check this out. 
it's uh, something that is on fire looks like so I will set this aside and this still might be viable Yep, it does add to the uh, textures. Okay, everybody, here we are at the final leg of this journey. I, as usual, rummage through my box of scraps and I have these uh, pieces of copy paper and pieces that I have offloaded my uh, brayer on and I thought I would uh, apply some collage as a final touch. Now the uh, pieces might be a bit small, but I think they do add some accent to the piece. Some additional detail. Okay, here's the last piece. That is print number one. And here is the ghost print. Now oh, I found these copy paper prints with uh, larger lines and I thought they would give some contrast 
to the finer textures. Okay, and then here is the last piece here, which is like an exclamation point. There. Now I am not going to be bothered by this misregistration here. I'm just going to leave it as it is uh, because there's there's a limit to trying to camouflage your mistakes. Sometimes it's best to just leave it as is and Let me get rid of this. And maybe for the person who wants to purchase this piece, you can have a mat that comes up to here. And it won't be so bad because the uh, I noticed the gel plate is not exactly plumb. Now, these are not exactly 90 degrees because the gel plate tends to to shift uh, shape because it's uh, very flexible so it doesn't keep its shape all the time. Sometimes it gets uh, bent it gets stretched out of shape and that's why I have these guidelines to keep it in place as much as possible but it's um, very difficult to keep it in the same place especially when you're constantly pulling the paper um, as what happened earlier, the plate shifted and I didn't notice. So you find out when it's too late, when you have these kind of mishaps. So anyway, I, you know, you live and learn. I'm not ashamed to show the uh, mistakes because that's part of learning. So anyway, this is ghost print number two. Here is the last ghost print, which I like a lot because it has these brilliant colors. And I will place some collage here. Just Two elements here, very simple. And this is a uh, warm-up exercise on copy paper and I think this will make a nice main subject matter
just trying to get the uh, wrinkles out. There. So I think this is it for the third ghost print. Now I will allow these to dry completely and then I will recap. Okay, finally reaching the last part of this video. The pieces have dried by now and let me show you a close-up for the details. Now here are the textures made by the bubble wrap. The same with these. These are the smaller textures. And And the uh, copy paper complements the scribbles. So that is the first print. Here is the second one. This has more of a bold graphic look because of the black. And maybe it's because of the nature of the Fabriano paper that it is very pebbly or textured that it creates these um, kind of sandy uh, finish. That's the ghost print number two. And this is the last piece, which again is my favorite because of the complex textures. This is more like, almost like a watercolor. Okay, again, uh, thank you so much for watching and coming along for the ride. Uh, it's not without its problems, but I learned something and I can show you uh, what not to do. Anyway, thank you and I hope to see you next time.